this year's E3 was entirely uh, all virtual. Uh, thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, E3 was canceled last year, and this year, uh, probably very wisely, the event's organizers decided to just keep the whole thing um, live streams. So instead of going and standing in crowded conference rooms or standing in line, demoing games in person, the whole thing we could enjoy from the comfort of our own home. Uh, things kicked off with the Summer Games Fest, and some highlights from the Summer Game Fest included Tiny, Te Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. That's a hard one to say. Uh, this is a spinoff from the Borderlands franchise. Uh, so Borderlands, you know, is a loot shooter. It's got a cool cel-shaded art style. And um, Tiny, T Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is, you know, looks very similar, but it's a fantasy game. So there's dragons and, you know, monsters and spells and magic and all that. Um, it looks really good. We'll see. Uh, also at the Summer Games Fest, my most anticipated title uh, of the entire show and really of any video game right now, From Software's Elden Ring. Uh, we haven't really seen or heard anything about Elden Ring in a couple of years, so the fact that this was shown off at you know at the end of the Summer Game Fest was really cool. Um, this is you know from a, a collaboration between From Software uh, and director Hidetaka Miyazaki and a song of ice and fire author george R. R. martin uh you know the man behind game of thrones so that's an interesting collaboration i'm pretty excited to see what kind of sort of world building and dark fantasy these two guys came up with so seeing martin and miyazaki work together in a project is really exciting and the trailer for this game was mind-blowing and epic and yes it looks like dark souls but dark souls with horses with a big open world um, with lots more freedom and lots more choice on, on how you explore and how you build your character. And it just looks awesome. Um, later on that weekend, we got the Ubisoft and Gearbox uh, showcases. And the, uh, you know, Ubisoft showed off a couple cool games. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. That one looks neat. This is based on James Cameron's Avatar, you know, over a decade after that movie came out where we're seeing this game and it's an open world action adventure first person game that takes place on Pandora in the jungles of Pandora. You play as a Navi uh, and it looks pretty good. Um, you know, that movie had its strengths and weaknesses, but I think as a, as a video game series, it really does make sense and it certainly looks very pretty. Um, Gearbox's showcase, we. We already talked about Tiny, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I cannot say that to save my life. Uh, but that was shown off at the Summer Games Fest. And really the rest of the Gearbox presentation was just, we, we just won't even mention it. We won't talk about it. Uh, Microsoft and their newly acquired company Bethesda put on their own showcase. And this was actually quite good. Microsoft has had some kind of bad uh, offerings recently. Last year, their Halo Infinite uh reveal was a big fail uh, a lot of sort of missteps from from this company but this showcase was actually pretty good uh, granted some games look better than others but the fact is microsoft did two things very very well first of all they just showed off games and they didn't do a lot of talking just showing off the games that's where that's where you, the money is right so microsoft did this they showed off a lot of great games and <clears throat> they really drove home one point over and over and over again and that is that almost all of these games are coming to Game Pass and almost all of them are coming to Game Pass at launch. So everything they showed off, if you're a, a Game Pass subscriber, you're getting that game without having to buy it for 60 or $70 or whatever. It's just part of your subscription. Uh, and these games included Starfield, which we finally saw a trailer for. This is Bethesda's big space RPG. We didn't see much of it, so there's not a whole lot to say, but we got to see something. Uh, we got to see uh, a, a bizarrely long trailer for Stalker 2, the, the sequel to the sort of classic open world survival uh, Russian apocalypse game. Um, that looks good. Uh, the trailer was a little long, but the game itself is exciting. Um, another Russian game, Atomic Heart, was shown off. This game looks gorgeous. Um, I'm still not entirely sure what it's going to be about, but it's a uh, it's sort of a Bioshock-esque game and uh, there's some weird robots and the, the graphics are phenomenal and someday that's going to release uh redfall from arcane the makers of dishonored this is a co another co-op game there's a lot of co-op games on the show this year um and this one's about fighting like vampires and the occult and uh that looks good I, I love arcane they make some of the best games i've i ever play especially on pc dishonored prey just a great studio all around 
Um, Forza Horizon 5 takes place in Mexico, so that's going to be a fun open world racing game. Uh, Flight Simulator, this is coming to Xbox Series X this summer, and Game Pass of course. Uh, Flight Simulator, it's not really my cup of tea necessarily, but man it looks good. And if you just want to like test out your PC, it's a great game to do that with, but apparently it's going to look very similar on the Xbox Series X as on a high-end gaming PC. So that will be interesting to try out. Um, Beyond that, there was a number of, of interesting indie titles like The Ascent, Replaced, uh, smaller games, often with you know either like top-down shooters or pixel art platformers, uh, but a lot of good stuff. Um, moving on, we come to the Nintendo Direct, which took place Tuesday. This was all kind of spread out between Thursday and Tuesday, so there was a lot of different offerings. Uh, and the two highlights from this show for me were Metroid Dread, which is a the, the first 2D platformer uh, in the Metroid series in 19 years, which is crazy. But um, this kind of harkens back to the roots of the franchise. If you ever played Metroid on the NES, uh, that was that was a hard game. <laughs> I, I have I have some traumatic memories of that game. No, it was fun, um, and this looks good. And um, then there was the the first big you know first real trailer for. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. We don't have a title for that game yet, but we got a full trailer. It looks fantastic. You know, we don't usually get direct sequels to Zelda games. There's usually just, um, you know, individual games like Wind Waker or Skyward Sword, and then, you know, they're all sort of different thematically, artistically. But we're getting a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild. It looks really, really incredible. Looks like you're going to spend more time in the clouds, in the sky, not maybe flying or maybe falling, uh, gliding a lot, I don't know, uh, but it looks gorgeous and it looks fun and I'm really excited for that one. Um, so those are the sort of highlights for me from the show. I didn't catch every single conference, I didn't catch every single live stream. There's a bunch of indie titles, there's a bunch of more obscure titles, uh, but these are sort of the big ones. If you missed E3 this weekend and you're just curious to know, you know, what kind of games have shown off, um, check out check out the ones I listed. Check out Elden Ring, man. If you don't play Dark Souls, get into that franchise. Uh, Elden Ring looks terrific, and um, uh, Halo Infinite was shown off as well. Forgot to mention that one, but that is uh, that's looking good. Um, graphically, it still doesn't quite feel like as next gen as we would hope, but the the multiplayer is going free to play, and it's going to have a battle pass system and all the rest, and that could be uh, that could be. A, Pretty cool for the Halo franchise to have a more robust sort of games as service uh, multiplayer. So uh, that's E3. Uh, let me know what you enjoyed, or what you're looking forward to, which games are kind of upcoming and exciting for you. Um, shout out in the comments and definitely subscribe uh, to Forbes and Forbes Games and uh, appreciate it. Thanks. Peace.